So now we're in a position where we're going to be recreating the tool chain. we we'll start off with glibc. Again, I've tabbed. It's not completed because there's a patch file, so just put the full stop in and tab again to complete the name of the archive that we're extracting. So now we've got this patch to run in. You can see it says what the patch does. So it's not absolutely necessary, but it just um, in this case it it makes the um, location of a directory FHS compliant. So another case command. So we we'll copy all these lines in this box. Run that in. You can see it's done a couple of things there. And then for these programs that are part of the tool chain, we create a separate build directory. And we can now run in the configure command. And we can start building this one. So I'm going to time this just to keep an eye on the, how long it takes to execute. Uh, now I've just thought of something actually. I don't think we have the um, flag for compiling in parallel set. So let's go back and check that. So let's just find the page that that was on. Went to find that. I'm pretty sure it won't be available in the throat. So. Yeah, it's this variable here, so if we just echo that. Yeah, it's not set. So what I'm going to do, because I've stopped this build halfway through, I'm going to go back to the sources and delete it and start all over after I've set this flag up. So I'm going to go back, remove the glibc directory. I'm also going to come out of the troot and I'm going to add in this assignment here as part of the troot command and I'll stick it here where the rest of the um, environment variables are being set. So there is later on we have to use a different troot command so I'm going to have to try and remember then to also add in the make flags because I think there's still a few more packages to compile but if we stick that in there and press enter we've gone back into the truth if we now echo dollar make flags you'll see it's now set so we should get the full use of all the cores so I'll leave that tab up so we'll go back to the sources and we'll just start glib c from scratch again. So we extract it and this is what you should do every time if there's any ever, any ever, ever any problems with um, any of the packages you're compiling. Um, even if you get it, you know, do a fix and complete it, it would be best to not install that but to extract it, start again. Uh, once you've extracted it, make your fix or change that you need to make and then build it right from the outset rather than tweaking things because you can never know if you've um, you know, done any damage to it. Although we will actually be testing in this part, running the um, unit tests. Um, it's best to do uh, a complete run all the way through rather than let, letting it carry on if you can. Just bear in mind that what you're doing, you're creating a system and if it's a system you want to be using, an operating system you want to be using, you want to be as sure as possible that it's as reliable and the integrity of it is is a hundred percent. So that that's why you don't really want to take any risks anywhere at this point. 
So let's extract Glibc again, change into it, and we have to run in all these lines again. So we'll patch it again. And run this command in again. And then make the build directory again. Figure. Right, so the make should run a little bit faster now. So just time make. Yeah, it looks like it's rattling through a lot quicker, it's doing a lot more. So um, just let that run and uh, come back and carry on when it's finished. Right, so that has compiled. So um, there's an important box out here saying the tests are critical. Completely agree with that. Um, I wouldn't advise that you skip it unless you've compiled it before on the same system and you're happy um, with the results you've had previously. But th this is the first time I've compiled this. I'm definitely going to um, test it. So. Um, it's saying that we need to run this case command in. Um, it's needed to run the test at this stage of building in the true environment, so we need to put that in. Let's run that in, and then we can run this make check to actually do the test. So I'm just going to time this again. Give me an idea of how long it will take if we ever need to do it again in the future. So I'll just wait for these tests to run now.
Right, so that has finished. And you can see there's some failed tests. So what we'll do is just scroll back and just compare them with the ones that are known to fail. So there's a few unsupported ones, so we can ignore those. The first one we've got is, oh, this looks like an unexpected pass. So that one can be ignored. So I've got one failure, uh, which is not bad at all, uh, which is TST, MISC TST, TTY name, and that's the first one there. It says it's known to fail in the true environment. So because of that, that's a, a pretty good result for uh, glibc, um, especially as there's other, these other tests that are known to fail sometimes. So that's um, a very clean test. So we can carry on putting these other commands in. So this touch just prevents a, a warning being printed out when we're installing. Another one that issues a sanity check because we're in the partial LFS environment. And now we can actually run the install. Okay, so that's installed. Just com copy a configuration file and make a directory. So the next bit is about installing locales for the system. So you do need at least one locale for your your area. Um, it says for comprehensive testing for the remaining packages we need to install all of these as well as the um, locale for your own country. So I'm going to start by installing my own um, locale um, which is not actually here so what I'll do is I'll oh, first of all I've got to make this directory here which is where they live and then I'm going to copy this US one the ISO 88591 is correct for GB, it's just this GB needs to change. And obviously if your own locale is not there, then you need to find out what the codes are, the language codes and the um, code pages or the ISO uh, character set that's needed. Um, so for GB, it is ENGB. Um, ISO 88591 and NGB at the end, similar to this US one, just change the US for GB. And also it's recommended to have the UTF-8 version as well, so I'll stick that in. Other than that, I'm going to add all of these in, just so that there's a reduced chance of uh, any failures of the tests we're going to run in later packages. Doing this because it's the first time I've built this uh, LFS 9.1. If I'd have built it previously, I wouldn't bother doing this. I'd still run the test, but I wouldn't bother with the locales that I didn't need. I'd just put the two GB ones in. As I don't think I'd need to be as thorough things I'd built it previously. So I'll just take a moment to put these in. I'm actually going to take a chance and run the rest of these in because they're not responding with any error messages or, or any any messages at all when they're installed. So I can just watch them go past. Yeah, you can see each one's gone in and then the next one's gone in. So 
as long as there's no other messages in between each of these commands then you can safely know that they've all gone in so that's all that lot <clears throat> um, it says on an alternative here you can run this um, script I presume it is to install every single locale but you, you probably don't want to do that that'll take up quite a bit of disk space as well I would have thought and it would take a bit of time to um, to execute um, there's a bit here about Julibc uses libidn when resolving internationalized domain names and that's a runtime dependency and if you need that but you need to go to the BLFS page to do that but for our purposes we, we don't need to worry about that at all so we've just got a few um, configuration files to make so let's create this first one and then got some time zone data to add so let's run this in now so these are all individual commands again and now we've got four do loops so we copy everything from the four up until the done it's all taken to be one command that's executed okay and then run this copy command that's okay this sick command and finally we unset the variable that was set earlier on <coughs> there's an explanation of what this is doing here now we need to find out what time zone we're in for the next command so we can run this tz select program and you just answer the question so the first question is what, what continent are we on so obviously I'm in Europe so I'll select 7 and then what country am I in? I'm in Britain, so I'll select 8. And it says the following information was given, therefore your time zone is Europe stroke London. Is it uh, correct? Yes, it is. I'll select 1. So this information here on this line, Europe stroke London, is what I need to replace these X's with, the shovel and the X in this line. So if I copy this link command here first, Go back and delete that triple X there. Double click that and paste that in there. So it, it re, you can see it makes more sense now. It's, it's linking this file London in the Europe directory, which is in the zone info directory, etc., to the etc local time file. And there it is. So that's the um, time zone set up correctly. Now we configure or create a dynamic loader config file. So again, just copy all of that because this cat command is creating that file with the, the text in between that cat command and the EOF. And it says if desired, uh, it can search other directories. Um, so this is worth doing, especially if you're going to do the BLFS, which I will do another video on BLFS 9.1. Um, and I think some of the packages we actually had other paths into this this file so it's worthwhile putting this one in now as it is and we'll make that directory as well so that's glibc done now we go into a stage where we adjust the tool chain and this is why we took a copy of the tools directory if, if we needed to go back to that because we're as you can see we're going to be making changes to the some of the programs in the tools directory and obviously once you change those programs you can't go back to the beginning of this current chapter anymore because you've made those changes so that's why we've got a copy of that and if you remember it I think it was in the root let's just list the root no it wasn't where did I put it oh it's probably on the root of this um, yeah, where did we put it? Is it on the gen two? Hmm, I can't remember where we put that now. Oh yeah, there. Yeah, it's. Why can't we see that in there? 
Oh, it is at the top, sorry, yeah, because there's a capital L. I expected to see it halfway down the list, yeah, it is there. So, yeah, we're back in the truth on this tab, and there is the tools archive. Um, in case you didn't know, Linux follows strictly the, um, I think it's the ANTS ASCII um, ordering of letters, so because uppercase comes before lowercase letters, that's why that L in the LFS, capital L, is before uh, the rest of these because it, it appears first alphabetically. So yeah, so that that is the uh, like the unsullied version of the tools directory. So if if we could make these changes now and we you know make a mistake later on and we want to go back to start chapter six again, um, you know if something catastrophic has happened, then we would un unzip the tools. Delete the current one, un, un, un extract, or extract the tools directory out of this archive and start all over again. So let's do these changes now. You can just see it's renaming these um, commands. That's okay, and now it makes some changes to the configuration files that GCC uses. And it says it's a good idea to visually inspect the specs files to verify the intended change was actually made. No, it's quite complicated because it doesn't actually say um, exactly what it does. Oh, yes, it does here. Simply deleting all instances of the tools should leave us with the correct part of the Lamic lin linker. So. Um, not sure what the file is actually. The specs file. So it looks like that's the name of the file there. Oops. So let's see if we can display that, see if that works. Yeah, that's it there. So what it's saying is that in this file there shouldn't be any reference to the tools directory. Now that's quite a lot to go through. I'm surprised there's not more explanation there if they're going to say like it's worth checking. But we can try and use grep. I'm not sure if we've got grep. Yeah we have. To look for the word tools. And you can see there's nothing come up so that looks like that's that has worked. And you'd expect it to anyway, wouldn't you? Because it's the commands given there to to remove it. So finally, we on this little bit we create a dummy, or sorry, not a dummy C file. It's a small C file which just declares a main method with no code in it, and we compile it and produce a log file, and then. As before, we just check the output of that to make sure that we're using the new C library that we created. You see, previously it was in tools directory. Now it is the host, or sorry, not the host, the custom Linux from scratch uh, system that we're building. So it's in the lib off the root in this Truroot environment and LD Linux 86, 64, 64 bit. And as it says, if you're compiling on 32-bit, then the naming is slightly different of the directory and the file. Now that we've done that, we can make some further checks to ensure that the compilation is working and the C library has been configured correctly. So this command will just check the output of this. So we'll start user lib dot dot lib. Then we've got CRT1, CRTI and CRTN. The O succeeded, so that's good. Verify the compiler is searching for the correct header file, so let's run this command. So include dot 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 search starts here. User include, that's good. Next, verify the new linker is being used with the correct search path, so let's do that. 
Right, we've got four lines of output here, but it says references to pass up components of dash Linux new should be ignored, but otherwise the output of the last command should be this. So we can ignore that file, uh, that line there because it's got Linux GNU in, and the same with that one. So the two we need to check are these two lines here. Search uh, is user lib, that's correct, and search uh, is lib, so that's passed as well. Now let's make sure we're using the correct libc, i.e. we're using the one we just created, not the one in the tools directory. And the output is attempted to open lib libc so6, and yes, we've got lib libc so6. And now make sure that the compiler is using the correct dynamic linker. And this should re respond found ld linux x8664 dot so2 at lib ld linux x8664 dot so.2. So that's fine. So that's a very successful um, glibc installation. Once again, it says to remove the output files. Well, we're going to be deleting this build file where the output files are, so it's not really necessary to run that command. Um, if you see that, if we just list them, there's the files we created, so we're going to delete this directory. When we go back to the sources and type in rm-rf glibc.